This is module 12 in the smart sales system. In the previous module, we talked about how to deal with and get around gatekeepers. In this module, we're gonna talk about qualifying, which is basically a process of asking questions in order to determine how good or bad the prospect is in terms of quality and how likely they are to purchase from you. What we're gonna talk about here is very important. And one of the reasons why is because as a salesperson, time is your most valuable resource. You can always buy more materials, hire more people, but one thing that you cannot buy is more hours in the day or more hours in the week. You only have a fixed amount of time that you can use for selling, that you can perform outbound prospecting that you can use for meeting with prospects. So it's key to make the most out of this time. And in order to figure out how best to use your time, it can help to start to understand a concept of opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is when you have two things to choose from. The thing that you give up in pursuit of another is your opportunity cost. Let me give you an example. So if you are a car salesperson on a Sunday afternoon and you see two people walking around in the showroom or in the parking lot, you can only only go talk to one of those two prospects at a time. You can't have two conversations at the same time. So when you go talk to one person and you spend time with that prospect, and so the opportunity cost is what you gave up with not talking to the other prospect. If the other prospect purchases a car, then your opportunity cost in not pursuing that and choosing the other prospect is the commission that would have been made from selling that car. Now this concept can come into play every day for a salesperson because like I said, you you can send out a thousand emails at one time, but you can only talk to one person on a phone. You can only have one meeting. You can only deliver one presentation or one demo. So every day, what you choose to do, there's an opportunity cost for what you're giving up and making good decisions so that you minimize that opportunity cost so that you choose the right prospects to spend your valuable time with will directly improve your sales results and the, ultimately the amount of income that you're able to make. So just to simplify this, in order to to optimize what we make and how much we sell, we wanna decrease the time we spend with bad prospects and increase the time we spend with good prospects. And it's using a process of qualifying that will help us to make decisions to achieve those two things. To show you in another way why it's so important to qualify and get more information on how likely a prospect is to buy from you is if we kind of look at all of the prospects that you can cross paths with, this could be all of the prospects at a networking event or all of the prospects on your list that you're working when you're making outbound cold calls or sending emails. The majority of those prospects probably do not fit with what you have to sell for one reason or another. And when you're a product selling salesperson and you're trying to sell your product to everybody and trying to schedule a meeting with everybody, what can happen is, is that you can end up scheduling appointments and meetings with prospects that don't fit well. And when you meet with prospects that don't fit well, you end up wasting valuable time and you increase your opportunity cost because if you meet with a prospect that doesn't fit well, you gave up all that time that you could have spent looking for better quality prospects. So it's really critical when you're talking to prospects, you wanna figure out where they fit in this pie of, are they in the larger piece where prospects don't fit? Or are they in the smaller piece where there is a potential for a fit? And when you identify that there might slightly be a fit, we can actually divide that piece of the pie a little more to say, part of the prospects where there may be a fit, there's some of those that there definitely is a fit. They definitely need what you sell. And then we could go a little bit further to say, it fits right now, meaning there's budget to spend, they're able to move quickly, and they're ready to purchase right now. So by asking questions, we can figure out which slice of the pie the prospect fits fits in. And what that will do is that will help with our decision making on where to spend our time, what prospects to walk away from, what prospects to invest a lot of valuable time in. And like I said, when you're product selling and you're selling to everybody, you can fall into the trap of not asking enough questions and not qualifying enough. And then you end up selling to all of these prospects and that can lead to a lot of wasted time. What you also don't want to do is you don't just necessarily want to look for these prospects, which are those that are ready to purchase your product right now. This is the other extreme of we're going to miss out on a lot of other opportunities if we only look for the prospects that need what we sell and are ready to purchase what we sell right now. Sometimes product selling people can do this as well, where they're sending an email saying, I sell this, do you need what I sell? They're only looking for this small sliver. What we want to do is we want to focus on this whole quadrant of the pie where there may be a fit, there is a fit, and there is a fit right now. Now, depending on where the prospect is, certainly we can 
gonna adjust how hard we pursue them or how much time we spend with them. But certainly if there may be a fit, but it's, if it's only just possibly a fit, we wanna get engaged and stay in contact with that customer. So it's qualifying that will help you to figure out where the prospect is in this pie and help you to make good decisions regarding your time and minimizing your opportunity costs. What we've created is a two-step qualifying process. And step one is pre-qualifying. And step two is qualifying. So let's talk about each of those steps one at a time. Pre-qualifying is sort of, think of it as kind of a soft qualify. We're not really asking a lot of very deep questions and trying to gather a lot of information. What we're trying to identify is, does it even make sense to talk? And in order to determine that, all we wanna do is we wanna identify, are they in the quadrant of there may be a fit or are they in the, the rest of the pie where there's not a fit at all? Our pre-qualifying questions will help us to determine that. And if we can determine that, then it makes sense for us to continue talking and continue to invest our valuable time with that prospect. And all we really do in order to determine this is ask some very soft questions to learn what's going on with the prospect. To figure out what questions to ask, we can go back to our sales message because in a previous module when we created this sales message, this helped us to create different questions to ask. And that sales message helped us to create building blocks. And there's two building blocks that we will use for pre-qualifying. We can use our pain questions and our current state questions for pre-qualifying. These questions do a great job of figuring out what's going on and if the prospect is in the area of there may be a fit or they don't need what you sell at all. For example, here are the pain questions that we created for that demo sales message, which was for selling web design services. If you ask pain questions, this can help you to identify, is the prospect having challenges in the area where you have something to offer or is everything great? If everything is great, then they might be in the area of that they do not fit and do not need what you sell. And that can help you to determine that you might wanna to start to be very cautious about spending your valuable time with that prospect. The current state questions are also great at figuring out, does a prospect need what I sell? Because that will help you to learn what have they purchased in the area where you have something to offer? Are they currently using something today? How is it going? Who are they working with? And so these questions also help with pre-qualifying. You ask these two sets of questions and you are likely to know whether there may be a fit or there's not a fit at all. The two-step pre-qualification process aligns with the sales process that we've talked about in a previous training module. And it's very simple where this goes. And that is the first step. So in the first step of the ICE sales process is the initial contact. And this is where we're having a very first brief interaction, could be on a cold call, could be cold email, could be some sort of chat exchange, could be meeting someone somewhere. And our goal here in this initial contact is not to sell the product, it's to sell the conversation. And as part of trying to sell the conversation and identify not only if it makes sense for your prospect to agree to a conversation, but you also want to determine, does it make sense for you to spend your valuable time in a conversation? And so in the initial contact, this is where you want to pre-qualify. And the questions you can ask in the initial contact are your pain questions and current state questions. The next step in the process is to fully qualify, or you could look at this is more hard or deeper qualifying. And so at this point, we pre-qualified. So we identify that they're in the quadrant of that there may be a fit. Now we're trying to determine where do they fit in that quadrant and get more details so that we can figure out how to prioritize this prospect and manage our time. So our goal here is we wanna to try to determine how real is the deal. When, if the prospect is expressing some sort of need or interest, how likely are they to purchase? And we will pre-qualify by asking deeper probing questions. And instead of just giving you a long list of different questions to ask, to make this more easy for you to manage, we've broken out the areas that you want to look at into four different areas where you wanna measure or assess the prospect. You're basically using a thermometer to take the prospect's temperature, and you're trying to do that in four different areas. And for the prospect to be fully qualified and a very strong lead, they should be pretty strong in each four of these areas. And the four areas are, does the prospect need to purchase what you sell? Does the prospect have the ability to purchase what you sell? Does the prospect have the authority to purchase what you sell? Does the prospect have the intent to purchase what you sell? And so let's go through these one at a time, starting with the need to purchase. Basically, the need to purchase refers to, you may have a conversation with a prospect and they may love what you sell. You may have really innovative and neat features and offer really cool things with your product 
product or service and the prospect may love it. But does the prospect need what you sell or do they want what you sell? It's not to say that you cannot sell to someone who it's more of a want, but if they need what you sell, you can prioritize it more and treat them as a more qualified prospect. Because what can happen is, is sometimes, let's say you're selling business to business and you have a high ticket price item. The prospect may love what you sell, but when it comes time to get approval after you've done demo after demo after demo, they cannot get approval because their current system is working okay. Yes, your system works better, but their current system is working okay. So they can't justify spending the money. They need to spend the money on areas where things are not working well at all. In other words, where there's pain and there is a true need. So questions to ask to identify if there is a need or if it's more of a want could be what motivated you to look at us or brought you out to us? If it's a, like a face-to-face -face at a store, what brought you out to us? But what motivated the prospect to contact you? If they are an inbound lead, find out what brought them to your website. What motivated them to contact you and schedule a meeting? This will tell you clues as to what's going on. The prospect may say, well, our current system is being discontinued or we have this challenge, or they could give you an answer that tells you that they're, it's more of a want. You know, like if you're at a in a retail situation at a car dealership, what brought you out to us? Oh, well, my wife is next door getting her hair done. So I just wanted to see what, what your newest model was. Well, that's great, but that's not a need to purchase what you sell. So that's good information to get. Do you mind if I ask why you took time out of your schedule to meet with us? A similar question. This is good if you're doing outbound cold prospecting and you send an email or make a call and you schedule an appointment with a prospect or maybe a lead generation person that works for you scheduled an appointment. When you meet with that prospect, ask them, hey, do you mind if I ask why you took time out of your day to meet with us that could provide really valuable information that you might not know going into that meeting so what improvements could you see if you make this purchase what will happen if you do not purchase something this is a really great question if the prospects thinking of purchasing from you they're talking about pricing you're putting together a quote ask them you know hey by the way if you don't go through with this purchase what does that look like and the answer there could be interesting because maybe things are bad they talk about losing money or having to work more or having higher costs that's really good information and shows that there's a need for them to purchase from you you could also get an answer where well things will be okay and we'll continue to use our existing product well that's not great for showing that there's a need is there a date when this needs to be purchased by what happens if this purchase is not made by that date? What is the time frame that the project needs to work along? So all of those questions, and there's probably more questions you could ask, of course, but those are some questions that you can ask to determine how much does a prospect need what I'm trying to sell to them? And that level of need will help tell you how strong they are in one of the four areas. Now, if you identify that the prospect is medium in this area, meaning they kind of need it, but things are okay, I'm not saying that you should walk away, but that's a prospect that you may want to be cautious regarding the amount of time that you spend with them and how maybe you forecast their that opportunity in your pipeline. Okay, the second area is the ability to purchase. What we're basically referring to here does the prospect have the money to purchase what you're trying to sell to them? If the prospect needs what you sell, let's say they drive a car and their current car is breaking down, they definitely need a new vehicle and there's a major disruption in their life. But if they don't have a job, then they don't have the ability to pay for and purchase what you're trying to sell. So that prospect might not be qualified even if there is a need. Here are some questions that you can ask to try to determine how strong or weak the prospect is in, in terms of having money to spend on what you're trying to sell them. What is the range that you need your budget to stay within? I think this is a nice way to ask, do you have the money to spend on what I'm trying to sell to you? Instead of saying, do you have the money to spend or how much money do you have to spend or how much are you willing to spend? Where the prospect may get a little guarded by that level of a direct question about their finances. When you soften that a bit by including the range, you can make the prospect more comfortable sharing information with you. So what is the range that you need the budget to stay within? Is there a budget approved for this project? So if you're dealing with organizations in the B2B world, you know, if the prospect's talking to you about needing what you sell and, you know, it's very good to identify where they're at in terms of the budget approval. And if there are funds that are approved in the budget, have they been allocated to this purchase? Is there another purchase that could come in and swoop up the, those funds? What budget or department will this purchase be made under? Are there other purchases that this funding may end up being used for? How does this project fit with other initiatives from a priority standpoint? So what a lot of those questions are getting at is, first of all, you're just trying to identify is the money there? And then the second half of those questions are really trying to, you know, 
know, see how protected and allocated that money is so that you don't spend 10 months working with a prospect and at the end, the money gets taken away by another department. Now, the information you get here can tell you what you should do with this prospect. So let's say that the prospect is interested and they need what you sell, but they don't have budget. I'm not saying that you should walk away from that prospect and close that lead and never pursue them. But what you can do is you can be more cautious of the time that you spend with them. If their budget is finished for this year, and then what you can do is you can position this opportunity for the next budget cycle. So you can try to find out the timing for budget planning and try to get everything lined up so that when the next budget opens up, you can be top of their mind and as one of their top priorities. So I, this information tells you what to do. And if there is no money in the short term, be a little cautious, play it a little slower. If there's never ever going to be money, it's, if it's a long-term funding budgetary problem, then you might want to walk away and possibly just add the prospect to a drip campaign and not spend any of your valuable time with them. The next area is authority to purchase. And authority to purchase means how much decision-making power does the prospect have that you're working with? And so one way I like to try to find out how much power the prospect has, instead of just directly asking them, are you the decision maker? Which I think is sometimes a flawed question because if you ask the prospect, are you the decision maker? They, you may get an answer of yes. And that could be for a couple different reasons. One is the prospect may genuinely think they are the decision maker, but it's really the person they report to that signs the agreement. If the person they report to approves the agreement, signs the contract, then that person is really the ultimate decision maker. So the prospect may think that they are, but they're really not. The prospect may also know that they're not the decision maker, but they don't want you to know that for a couple reasons. One is they may have a level of ego and not want to lose any appreciation that you have for them. They want to present a very strong impression and that they're the decision maker, or they may want to prevent you from like going out as a maverick and trying to get around them and bothering the person that they report to. So if you ask, are you the decision maker? You could get an answer of yes, and that's not the accurate answer. And another way I like to go is to ask, what is the decision making process? So that the prospect may respond with, I'm the person that makes a decision. Okay, great. What happens next? Well, after that, we have to produce this sort of document. Okay, what happens next? Oh, well, then that document has to go through this committee. Okay, what happens next? And just keep asking what happens next to map out their decision making process. And if you're very direct, and you just go through and make a note step by step, you most likely will be able to identify who the decision maker is. And that's likely the person that approves the fund, signs the contract. And when you identify that, it will help you to identify how much authority to purchase your prospect has. What parties will be involved in the decision making process? What are the key factors the decision will be based on? What functional areas will be impacted by the purchase? Is there a committee that this type of purchase has to go through? Who's the ultimate decision maker? Who is the person that will need to sign the contract? So some questions there you can ask to figure out how much decision-making power your main prospect that you're dealing with has. Now, if you identify that the prospect that you're dealing with does not have a lot of decision-making authority, or if they're not the ultimate decision-maker, this is very valuable information. And I'm not saying that you should walk away or, or not spend any time with that prospect if they do not. This can help tell you to do a couple things. First of all, you may want to adjust and try to start to turn the prospect you're dealing with into more of a coach and try to get them to help you with navigating the organization and getting the key players involved. And that's the second thing you, that you should do is try to get the key players involved. So if you're dealing with a VP of finance and you identify that's the CFO that signs the contract and is the ultimate decision maker, you want to use this knowledge as an action item for you to try to get the CFO involved in some way or another into the discussions that are going on. And I'm not saying that you need to sort of throw the VP of finance to the side and try to work directly with the CFO, but you should try to get them involved in the discussion, at least make them aware of what's being discussed. And one way you can do that without really offending or scaring off prospect that you're dealing with is you could be very direct. Once you identify that the CFO is the ultimate decision maker, you could be very direct to say something like, okay, great. Well, our standard process is very short, brief interview with the CFO to gather some information before we finalize the proposal. What's the best way to get that on the calendar? So that's a much better way to get that person involved than to say, can you get me a meeting with the CFO? When you ask 
ask that, then you might get an answer of no, or it might make the other person uncomfortable. Present it as part of your process, very direct, and just try to get at least that person engaged in a very brief meeting. If they're not available for a brief meeting, like in the way that you mentioned, it was part of your process, just try to work with your coach, which is the prospect, to make sure that person is aware of what's being discussed and the discussions that are going on so that in the 11th hour, they aren't blindsided by some sort of huge proposal and cost that they end up not agreeing to and you waste all that valuable time. The next area is the intent to purchase. And this is an often overlooked area. And what we're talking about here, does the prospect intend to purchase from you? Not in, does the prospect intend to purchase from somebody? And for this, let me give you an example. So let's say that you sell cars and someone comes onto the dealership and they are strong in all of the other three areas. Their current car is breaking down, they have a good job, and they are the decision maker. So you could look at those three things and say, I'm gonna sell a car today. And if you only ask the questions that I've just given you already, you may think you have a great prospect. And what you can often be overlooked is, does the prospect intend to purchase from you? And if you don't ask the right questions, what you might not learn is that it's Sunday afternoon and the prospect has spent all weekend at another dealership doing a lot of test drives, becoming friends with the other salesperson, has already negotiated pricing. But before they made that purchase, they wanted just to make sure that they negotiated a good price so they come out to your dealership. And in this case, this prospect is weak in the area of the intent to purchase from you. And so what can happen here is that you spend a lot of time with this prospect, give them a price, and then they go off, purchase from the salesperson they've been working with this whole time. And this can happen in the B2B world where a prospect sends out an RFP to a number of vendors and they've really already been working with one particular vendor. That vendor actually helped them to write the RFP. And then you receive the RFP and you look at the RFP and based on what they're talking about, they definitely have a need to purchase, ability to purchase and authority to purchase, but they don't intend to purchase from the other vendors they sent the RFP to. They're just either following a procurement process where they have to send out an RFP before they purchase, or they're just you know, confirming that they're getting a good price from their vendor. So this is an often overlooked area, but it can provide very valuable information. And if you identify that the prospect is weak in this area, it can help you to make a couple very important decisions. First of all, if you identify that the prospect is weak in the area of intent to purchase, the first thing you could do is you could just really give your best and final lowest possible price. So going back to that car dealership example, if you know that they already have a negotiated price, just drop to the lowest possible price you can and see if that you know is able to allow you to steal the deal. The other thing is, is that you need to be very cautious of your time. If the prospect is leaning towards someone else, don't spend time traveling all over the place or spending a week on a beautiful proposal. Just put together a proposal using boilerplate templates so that you put together something really quick and fire it off and you know maybe you might be able to get some traction. And here are some questions that you can ask to try to measure the prospect in the area of intent to purchase. What other options are you considering? So you should always ask what other options they're considering in terms of other vendors or other products or other options. Be very direct. Don't be scared to ask. If you're very direct and just ask them, they might just tell you, oh, we're talking to these guys, we're talking to these guys, we're looking at this. How far along are you in discussions with them? It's very helpful to identify, are you at an equal place in terms of they just contacted their other options and now they're just contacting you? Or have they been talking to their other options for three months and now they're engaging with you? How do you feel about your other options? Great question there. They may tell you things that they like about them. That's good information. They may, they may tell you things that they don't like. What do you like about them? What do you not like about them? How do they compare to what we have to offer? Is there a reason why you would choose us over them? If you had to make a decision today, which way would you lean? So really good questions there just to figure out are they only talking to you or are there other people involved? And that can help you to figure out how cautious you need to be or how much time you need to invest moving forward. And if we go back to our sales process, in the initial contact, all we're doing is pre-qualifying to determine if it makes sense talking. Then you progress to the conversation, which is the second step in the sales process. And here's where you start doing the real qualifying. So in terms of questions to ask, 
Of course, you can ask any of those four categories of questions, deep qualifying questions. You might also have pain or current state questions that you didn't get a chance to ask yet. So that could be part of your qualifying as well. But it's really in the conversation step where you're really trying to dig a little deeper to figure out what's going on and how much time should I spend with this prospect? How likely is this prospect to purchase from me? How well does this prospect fit with what we have to offer? And the information you give there can help determine if it makes sense for both you and the prospect's time to move to the next step in the sales process, which is the next step is the explanation. This could be a demonstration or a presentation. You definitely don't want to spend time doing demonstrations or presentations to people who don't fit at all with what you sell. That's just a waste of time. And like I said, time is your most valuable asset. So you move to the explanation step. Here's really where you're more talking about your stuff. But certainly at the end of the explanation, you could go back to do more qualifying. I just showed you a bunch of questions for qualifying, it's very likely the case that even if you are very diligent and you're at the conversation, meeting, appointment step, and you ask some good qualifying questions, it's very likely that you're not going to ask all of your questions. So at the end of the explanation step is where you can come back and do more qualifying, ask more questions about the budget or the organization or the processes. So primarily qualifying takes place at the conversation step, but you it could probably trickle over to the explanation and, and even conversations after the explanation step. So those are the four areas that you want to measure to really figure out how good or bad the prospect is, what you would be looking for to identify, is this a really good prospect that's likely to purchase and move forward? They would be strong in all of these areas. They would need what you sell. They would have the ability in terms of money to purchase what you sell. They have the authority to say, let's do it. Let's purchase this. They intend to purchase from you and are not just kicking tires. So they should be strong in all of those areas. Now, if they're weak in just just one area that can make it a not so great prospect. I've already discussed they could be strong in three of the four but in just one area, like if they don't have the ability to purchase, but they're strong in other three areas, it's not a great prospect. If they're strong in all three areas, but they don't have decision-making authority, and the person that makes the decision is not involved in any of your discussions, then you could be wasting time every additional meeting that you schedule. So these four categories are not just to determine how good or bad the prospect is, but dependent on which area is weak, will give you direction on what you need to do next. If the prospect is is weak in the area of funding, you just need to slow play it. If the prospect is weak in the area of authority, then you need to get different people involved in the discussions or aware of what's going on. If the prospect is weak in the area of intent to purchase from you, you need to be cautious of your time and just send over your best and most aggressive pricing. Qualifying is all about protecting your valuable time. And in order to protect your time, we're going to use this process to separate the good prospects from from bad and we're going to decrease the amount of time we spend with bad and invest our valuable time in only good prospects. It's just a simple process of asking good questions to measure and assess the prospect. Ask pre-qualifying questions to determine if it makes sense to talk. That would be pain and current state questions. Use qualifying questions to determine is this lead for real and worth our valuable time. The pre-qualifying takes place in the initial contact and then you qualify in every conversation after that initial contact such as the conversation, a appointments explanation. That's pretty much it for today. The next module, we will talk about appointments and how to schedule and structure the meetings that you schedule with prospects to get the most out of that valuable time and interaction.